In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how biology teachers can use ChatGPT to make our jobs easier. So let's do it. Hey, this is Leslie Samuel here from Interactive Biology where we're making biology fun. And man, let me tell you this. I used to be a biology teacher at a high school and then I became a university professor. And there's one thing I can tell you about that job. It, it, it gets stressful at times. I can remember being so overwhelmed so many times because I had to grade papers. I had to come up with lecture outlines and lesson plans and, and create test questions and all this kind of stuff. There's so much to do and oftentimes so few resources to help you get it done. And when I was teaching, I remember I would try to find any tool that I could find to make my job easier. Today, I'm gonna to talk about one that can do that in significant ways. Now, we've been hearing a lot about AI, artificial intelligence. We hear about it in the news, we see it all over the internet. People are going crazy right now for AI. The robots are coming and they're gonna take our jobs away. That's what you hear in some circles. There's a lot of talk about students that are using AI to write their papers and do their homework for them. And while there are many legitimate concerns, I'm not talking about any of that in this video. In this video, I'm just trying to make somebody's life easier and help us be more effective in our teaching. Now, the tool that I'm gonna be using is ChatGPT, not just because it's the one that so many people are raving about right now, but because it's really good. ChatGPT is an AI platform developed by OpenAI, and what I wanna do right now is I wanna take you in there, and we're just gonna get it to help us out. To set the scene, I'm gonna be a biology teacher that is teaching a foundations of biology class at a university, and I'm just getting into the section on the digestive system. Let's see what we can come up with. Okay, so this is based on a system of prompts. You have to give it a prompt and it's gonna act like an intelligent machine to deliver whatever it is you're prompting it to deliver. So for the first prompt, what I'm gonna say is, I'm a college professor that teaches a foundations of biology class. I'm just using regular language right now. We'll see what happens. I'm going to do a lecture Introducing the digestive system. Create a lecture outline for me. Enter. Sure, here's an outline for a lecture introducing the digestive system. Introduction, the definition and importance of the digestive system, basic concepts of nutrition, the anatomy of the digestive system, an overview of the digestive tract and its components. It is literally creating the entire lecture outline for me right now. So we go from the anatomy to the function, to regulation of the digestive system, common digestive disorders, and is giving me examples, a conclusion, and it's even giving me some tips like add additional details, examples, and anecdotes to make it more engaging and interactive for your students. Good luck with your lecture. <laughs> this is crazy. It just created an entire lecture outline for me. Now, let's say I'm not too sure about one of these sections and I need some additional information. I'm gonna go ahead and say, can you write a script for me? for the section on common digestive disorders. And it's gonna say, sure, here's a script for the section on common digestive disorders. And you can see it's section number five, which is the same section number five up here. And it's acting as if we just discussed the anatomy, function, and regulation of the digestive system. So now it's gonna give me some more information about those specific digestive disorders. So it tells me what GERD is, ulcers, irritable bowel syndromes, and inflammatory bowel disease. It is giving me more information, the information that I need. Now, I gotta say this, the information that you get from ChatGPT is not always gonna be 100% correct. And I highly recommend for you to double check anything it gives you. But what you can see is it is making my job easier. It's giving me a starting point that I can use to then teach it to my class. That is amazing. Okay, let's say I want the students to do some kind of a project, a creative project that they can do for homework. Give me an idea for a creative project I can give my students to help them better grasp the concepts. Return. 
one idea for a creative product, creative project is to help you to help your students better grasp the concept of the digestive system is to have them create a journey through the digestive system storyboard or animation. Here's how the project could work. And now it's giving me details about how this project could work. Provide your students with a list of organs in the digestive systems and the basic functions. Ask them to create a visual storyboard or animation. Encourage them to get creative with their storytelling using illustrations, yada, yada, yada. Once they've completed their projects, you can have them present their storyboards or animations to the class, explaining the key concepts and processes involved in the digestive system. I didn't have to think of any of this. It just made up that idea. Let's say I want another project idea. Give me another creative and fun project idea where students can get actively involved. Notice, I'm not telling them that it's about the digestive system, but because this is a conversation I've been having with it, it knows the context. Another creative and fun project idea could be to get your students actively involved in a DIY digestive system project. And now it's gonna tell me how that can work. The take home message here is, it is giving me all of these ideas for creative things that I could do with my class and creative projects that I can have them work on. That is amazing. All right, let's see what else it comes up with here. Now it's also telling me by engaging in this project, students can get actively involved in the learning process and apply their creativity to a hands-on project. They're basically building a digestive system. I like this idea. Now I need to test their knowledge. So I need to come up with some quiz questions or something of that sort. So what I'm gonna say is, can you write me a set of 10, just because, multiple choice questions questions to test their knowledge. Please, I don't know why I'm saying please like I'm talking to a person, but I, I just say please. Please include, oops, let's type, please include the answer key and enter. Voila, here are 10 multiple choice questions to test your student's knowledge of the digestive system. Which of the following is not a function of the digestive system? And then it has these answers, uh, ab absorption of nutrients, regulation of body temperature, elimination of waste, secretion of digestive enzymes. The answer, of course, is B. And it's going to continue to come up with a list of 10 questions on the spot that I could use to test my students' understanding of the digestive system. Do you see how it makes my job easier? Look at this. This is, this is... This, it's, it's just ridiculous, but it's also exciting. We're coming up on question number nine. Which of the following is a type of inflammatory bowel disease? Irritable bowel syndrome, bowel syndrome Crohn's disease, gastroesophageal <laughs> reflux disease, I can't read, celiac disease. The answer is Crohn's disease. Now, once again, you wanna check this out to make sure, oh, it even gives me the answer key at the end. But you wanna check this out to make sure Everything is correct, but it gives you a starting point. It's as if I have an assistant that's a researcher that is doing the research for me on the spot immediately, faster than I could do it for myself. As you can see, ChatGPT, it doesn't replace teachers, but it's something that I could use as a teacher to enhance what I do and to make my job easier. I just gave it a few simple prompts and it gave me a whole lot of valuable information. So while there are people that are freaking out about AI and to a certain extent, I'm still kind of freaking out about it because there are concerns, there are genuine ways that this tool and these technologies can help us do a better job with what we're doing. Will it replace teachers? Absolutely not. But if we can leverage it to do a better job and serve our students better, then I think it's worth testing out. But I wanna know, what are your thoughts about this kind of technology? Does it excite you? Does it freak you out? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. My name is Leslie Samuel, that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.